Hi, I'm Dave. Uh, today on the Cider Baby Pod, I am speaking to the legend that is Robin McCauley. Hello, sir. <laughs> a legend in my own lunch in my own lunchtime. Hello, Dave. how are you? Dave? <laughs> I'm good. You're looking well, my friend. Thank you. You too. How, how's it going? How's um, it going? What's oh, up? Well, <laughs> no, I'm just taking it easy. You know, just doing a bit of this, bit of that. Yeah, but you're, in De- speaking... you're in Devon. You're in Devon, dude. I, I am. I am. <laughs> <laughs> a million miles from nowhere. But enough of that. Enough of that. Uh, so you have a new album out on Friday. I am alive and well. I'm very excited about the release on Friday. Um, most people call it my third solo album. It's really officially only my second because the first one way back, way yeah. back. Um, was never, was never intended as a solo record. Um, it just turned out like that. But uh, I'm really excited about the new one. Um, yep. We have three singles. Singles. Do people release singles anyway. But we have three <laughs> songs. We have three songs up on YouTube, and so far, uh, nobody hates it. So I suppose I, that's good. I've got to say, um, feel like feels like hell. I mean, that is a an amazing track i mean that was, sec- <laughs> that was the second single wasn't it i think the yeah, second one yeah 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 um and i've been playing uh, con- uh i've got i've got my list here and i need my glasses so <laughs> I can't go- do you want to borrow these <laughs> no 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 it's, it's all right I've, I've i've got mine here thanks <laughs> it can't go on i've been playing that on the radio uh recently which is a bit more of a power ballad more than the yeah rest of the you album. know it's, you it's know a lighter thing when they put you into a box to go, you know, people like to hear your power ballads. And so there you go. We um, we actually sat on the fence with, uh, should we just not release the power ballad or should we go with, we well, were going to go with a track called uh, Endless Mile, mm. which, which I think will become what they call the focus track of the yeah. album. So they may shove that one out come Friday. Um, so we decided to go with the power ballad, you know. Um, yeah. On my past with the likes of any time and when I'm gone and all of that sort of stuff. So God forbid people would forget what I do. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it's yeah. a nice song. It's a, it's a really cool song. I'm, I'm, I like it. Yeah. And, and there's a really, which most people won't hear, there's a really cool acoustic version. Okay. Um, which only goes on the uh japanese edition so um for the listeners for the listeners what i what i typically do is is um at least with the black swan stuff is after we release it and it levels out a little bit um i'll start sticking that one up on youtube so that they can actually hear the acute because it's really it's really cool and the band yeah. is the band is awesome and um i'm i'm a lucky man to have andrea Cervasio on guitar and and Nicholas on drums and Alessandro, of course, yeah, is the man yeah. at the wheel, at the man at the wheel again. And uh, I'm really happy. It's a, it's a, it's a nice modern production. Um, um, and and he manages not to make me sound like all the other frontier bands. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> moving swiftly on. Um, no, actually, I've I've got to say, um, I. I just went back over your um, Macaulay Shanker group stuff. Right. And your voice now on today's record on Alive sounds almost like it did back in the day. How have you managed that? Everybody else seems to have changed, altered, dropped tone or whatever. But Yeah. Um, I actually feel better than I did uh, then. Uh, um, mm. and, and and somebody brought it up during the week Um and just off the cuff, I went, you know, I remember my Grand Prix days. Mm. And of course, it's, you know, the horse is gone. But but I could sing those records now so much better than I did then. Um, and do I do anything magical? Um, once I'm done talking with you, I won't talk to anybody for the rest of the day. <laughs> <laughs> All done by sign language. <laughs> um, you know, it's... it's um, it's all I have to work with. It's 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 my voice. It's my instrument. Um, I take really good care of it. Um, mm. I'm I'm really boring when I'm on tour because I'm the guy with the, you know, the facial steamers, the humidifiers, um, 
I love a glass of wine. I love a shot of bourbon. But when I'm working, if it's a day, a week, or six months, mm. I won't touch any alcohol. I've never smoked in my life. So does that matter to some singers? That doesn't matter to me. That's that's crucial. Mm. Um, that's I have a regiment that I that I I stick to, um, and it seems to work for me. And if that means that I can step up to the mic and do my job, um, then that's important because that ultimately for me is super important that I can do my job because yeah. I, I love what I do. I love performing. I love the live show and I will repeat myself forever. I, I don't want to be that singer who walks out and I can, and I see everything. Trust me. I see everything. Um, <laughs> I see everything from the stage and I don't want to see that sort of, Jesus, didn't anybody tell this guy he needs to stop? <laughs> um, I, I don't want I don't want to hear those whispers because mm. um I've been to a lot of shows where I've been the one whispering and I'm going, you know, it's it's sad that, mm. that some singers, I'm 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 being honest, some singers go out and it's like, dude, don't you have any dignity left? You know, it's like it just doesn't sound good and and I think somebody, a friend should come and tell you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and, and because people pay good money, mm. that's really important to go and see a show. And I think they deserve to get the show that they paid the money to see. Maybe some people are deaf, they don't care. It's just to actually be there. I don't I don't yeah. know. Um, and that's great. Um, I want it to be better than that. That's all. Um, does that sound pompous? I don't mean to be. No, it, it doesn't. I mean, I, I've been to a few gigs where I've sort of cringed in the corner and thinking well maybe maybe you should have done a few warms up warm-ups in the dressing room first but uh... yeah I, i'm not sure if it's just the warm-up i mean i do my warm-ups i do my warm downs and all of that sort of you know technical stuff that that's you know uh i've always done um i'm just happy i'm, I'm yeah. really happy to be able to do what i do at my age and as long as i can do it i want to do it to the best of my ability and and uh i hope and pray that it's good enough that's that's um, that's the most i can ask for and um i sing my ass off on this record i had a huge amount of fun on it mm. um i like to push myself to the limits i always like to tell people i treat my voice like like a ping pong table i know what those white lines are and i know how far up i can go yeah. and sometimes i fall over the edge and it's not very pretty um, so I know my limitations and, and I work to the max on that and, and <laughs> pray to the gods, however many there are. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, I had a quick listen to Standing on the Edge just before we came on air as well. You, huh. You've actually stepped up, I think. You're a little bit heavier, a little bit harder, maybe, from that. Yeah, that was, the, that was the plan. You know, Standing on the Edge was was something the record company really wanted me to do even before the Black Swan records came out. Mm. Um, and I, honest to God, Dave, I said, who wants a solo record from Robin McCauley? Not me. And so I, I decided not to do it. We put it on the back burner. Um, and after uh, Shake the World came out with Black Swan, the label came back to me and said, hey, it would be really cool to keep the momentum going here. Mm. Do that damn solo record that we asked you to do. And and I thought, I don't know what to do. I, I, I don't know what to do. I don't know what kind of a solo record to do. So I reached out to my old Grand Prix buddies. I reached out to people that I knew that had written for Survivor because I spent six years in Survivor. I, I wrote with a bunch of different people to try and take a hint of what I was doing in the past and put it into a solo record where people go, oh, ah, it read that sort of connection. And I was shocked that we got such a great response to Standing on the Edge. And I thought, okay, now now we can now we can step through the door and and push the envelope to where it's it's now I know what to do. And so with Alessandro Del Vecchio, we, you know, we talked about it about giving it just a little tougher edge. My melodies are always, melod you know, I love big choruses. That's just how I, I write the oh. stuff. Um, but we wanted to mix that, get that fine balance going because the record company just, uh, 
doesn't like me to wear a different suit. They go, classic rock. We want a classic rock. We want you on a classic rock. And I go, but can't I do this? And they go, well, yeah, but not too far over there. Not too far over there. So, <laughs> so you know, it's like you, you gas up the machine and, and you, you know, sometimes you hit the brakes and it doesn't work and you move left or right and you push it as much as you can. Uh, but I'm really happy. You know, they sent me a bucket load of songs. Uh, 20 something songs I think I dwindled okay. it down to a, to a dozen um, I did a bunch of demos I sent them to Alessandro I said hey this is the 12 I picked and he goes this is a great 12 let's go for it and I went in and recorded them and I brought my son Casey that I usually do like on a Black Swan Records I yeah. bring him in and we we pick two three four five songs and get his voice and some backup vocals just so it's not me all the time doing all my own background vocals and we have a blast and yeah. uh, I love the selection I think it's a great balance on this record I like the edge Andreas Aveso is just a killer guitar player I just love what he yeah. does his tone is great and he really bounces off my 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 melodies on those choruses and he just plays all the right stuff for me and and he's he's a he's a monster you're going to hear a lot about this kid I, yeah. I i believe i believe he's just he's just great there's been a lot of references of, of a docking ish sound and i talked to him about it and he, he laughs and he goes that's just how i play i don't i don't yeah. pick anybody's sound it's maybe it's my tone you know mm -hmm. it's a great tone but it's his sense of melody that's I'm all about the melody. It's just really important that you're just not, you know, yeah. you know, jumping up and down the fret, the, the the neck, and and nothing's coming out. You know, speed is very impressive, but if there's nothing for me to to say, that is really cool. You know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and he does he does that. So, um, okay, enough of him. This is about me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Um, touring then. I mean. I'll embracing are you going to be uh touring at all with this album or? i am um I, I just between uh interviews this morning i'm actually talking to uh promoters um i will be on the frontiers uh festival okay. in milan later in the year and because the band uh will be rehearsed and ready for my show um, we may even incorporate some Black Swan in there just because people are yeah. saying, are you going to do any Black Swan? Because there's little to no chance of seeing Black Swan live, but not impossible. It's just, you know, everybody's so crazy with Foreigner and Whitesnake yeah. and, yeah. and Winger. Um, but never say never is what I say. So um, with the band rehearsed, it makes sense to me to try and, encompass it with a bunch of shows before during and after that yeah. sort of period of time and um and beyond that if it's if if it's possible you know it's all down to promoters and interest and who wants to see it and who'd buy a ticket because you can have a great show and nobody buys a ticket it's all over ticket. <laughs> thank you <laughs> so that's that's the plan so um I'm really excited at the prospect of taking these songs live I think they're going to be great live yeah and there's a bunch of tunes that I would really like to play live from Sandy on the Edge, the, the more, uh, you know, bigger songs. Um, and some Black Swan songs in there, maybe some MSG songs in there. I think it would be a kick-ass set. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I might even put a feeler out and ask people what I want to hear. That way I don't feel so guilty, you know, if they don't get what they, <laughs> if they, don't get what they want. <laughs> I mean, I, I remember you, I mean, Grand Prix sort of like came later on for me because I sort of like went back over your career. But the Far Corporation, that was quite a polarizing single, wasn't it? You I know, remember. Oh, God. Yeah. You know, when, when I was invited, I was working in Frankfurt um, mm. with another project together with Brian Robertson from Lizzie. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, Filthy Taylor from Motorhead. They had just left Motorhead. And Chris Len. Uh, Michael Schenker's bass player, you know, also Alex Harvey band. And we had a thing going and we ended up in Frankfurt uh, with another German guitar player, a, a young kid called Marcus Schleiser. And Frank Farian heard my voice 
um, I got invited into the studio. We were chatting for a little bit and he goes, okay, um, I want you to listen to something and I want you to sing this. And he started playing Stairway to Heaven and I went, you can't do this. <laughs> you know, I went, you can't do this. This is like, it's blasphemous. You just, you can't do this. This is a, this is a must not touch me. And mm. he goes, yeah, 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 yeah. I just want you to sing the first six minutes. Somebody else is going to sing the remainder of it. And then we put the voices in between and I'm going, that's the worst idea I've ever heard, right? <laughs> well, you know, as we know, I, I recorded it and uh, we, um, the first show we ever did was was a, a live TV show, well, recorded live yeah. uh, in Berlin, uh, a Thomas Gottschalk show that had 86 million viewers, I remember. Wow. Right on a Saturday night in Berlin, and Robert Plant was on the same show, and we had we had this we had our stage we had a a black backdrop with Stairway to Heaven written in silver, and when we were doing camera positioning at rehearsals, Kate Bush was on the stage next to me, wow. Slade were on the other stage, and I think there was a punk man called Ten Pole Tudor. Remember those guys? Yeah. Uh, they and they were dressed up as 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 priests, right? Yeah. And Bob Kimmel comes to me and he goes, "God damn, son of a bitch!" <laughs> <laughs> right? And because uh, he'd never seen anything like that. And um, I remember Robert Plant staring down the back of my neck and looking at this backdrop and going, "What the f right?" Yeah. And um, I said, "Don't look. I want my mommy. You go talk to the producer." And um, we have a ton of photos with Robert and all that sort of stuff. And of course, it just it got out the gate and and it was a top 10 in the UK and sold a ton of records. And and who do <laughs> we were on top of the box, man. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just one of those things that uh, the album was was a huge, huge success. Division one. Then we made a second one. Um, and, um, yeah, it, it was an idea. He was way ahead of the curve, actually. Mm -hmm. Think about it. Cause, because suddenly now people are putting two and more singers on the same song. And, and I went, well, he did that, you know, and we had a 40 piece choir up on stage with us singing and it makes me wonder, wonder right. And doing all of this kind of stuff. And, and it was, it was wacky at the time. But yeah. turned out to be just uh, people are going, huh, that's great. It's believable. And then, of course, I did a Vegas show right up to the pandemic for seven years and performed almost 1,500 shows, mm. five nights a week, and sang Stair with Heaven every single night of the week for seven years. So um, it haunted me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, you know, there by the grace of God, you never you never think, and then suddenly, you know, it's not for you to think. It's just it takes off. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay, I'm not gonna hold you up very much longer. Um what do they say? Think... What do they say, Dave? Funny old game, isn't it? Fuck it off. is a funny old game. <laughs> um yeah. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak to me tonight. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. By the records up on Frontiers Music SRL comes out Friday. Yep. I appreciate it. I appreciate it all. Thank you so okay. much. Robin McCauley, thank you very much. Awesome. Have a great day.